Hey guys, so I have been making videos on YouTube now for quite some time and I have a channel that at the time of recording has 11,000 subscribers, which is an immense source of pride in my life. Uh, at some point, over 11,000 people have, have expressed an interest in the content that I make and, and I take that as some of the highest form of flattery because on the internet no one's got any incentive to lie to you, least of all when it comes to something as um, a, as distant as a subscribe button. So it's to me uh, one of the most sincere forms of, of flattery is statistical flattery, <laughs> N numerical flattery. Um, so you know, flattery that can be measured in increments. I don't know. So I, I I I am kind of I'm very flattered by by the the kind of attention that this channel's got and that it's getting, and I'm really quite happy with it. So today I'm going to share some uh, knowledge that I've picked up uh, over the years, which which I feel has been helpful in making in bringing this channel where it is, and hopefully uh, some of you guys might be able to make use of it. Or failing that, at least you might sort of understand my mentality when it comes to looking at this channel and working on this channel. Okay, so the first note I've got here is, is know the appeal of your content. This effectively translates as know your audience. Uh, my audience has changed a lot over the past few years, but now it seems to be largely men anywhere between mid-teens and mid-40s, but there are plenty of, of blokes that fall out of that and plenty of women that fall out of that as well obviously, um, but that seems to be like the big catchment area. It's quite a big catchment area, but it's the expected catchment area that you'd get for a channel about tech. Um, the best way to know your audience, and the best way I feel that uh, that I know my audience is through engaging in the comments and uh, you know when you guys catch up with me on Twitter, that's always a good laugh, at Tech with Chris, link in the description. And, uh, and and just chatting with you guys about all of all of the stuff that I talk about on this channel is not only is it great fun and it uh, and it reminds me about why I'm making the content that I am, but it's a great way to actually tailor my content to the people do, who enjoy it, which is kind of great. I know that that can sometimes work to a detriment. The big uh, example of this is Portal 2. I don't know if you guys play Portal 2. Uh, one of the best games on Linux, if you ask me. Um, they were originally going to use the villain from the first Portal game, GLaDOS, as the... Um, they were actually going to make her a very minor role in Portal 2 um, in lieu of Cave Johnson, who was a new character in Portal 2, who I thought was really good, were really interesting as a character. Um, but because um, a lot of the fans found out that GLaDOS was going to be sidelined as a character, there was a lot of um, uproar about it. There was a lot of enthusiasm to for the developers to change that. The developers basically compromised and, and having half the story with Cave Johnson, the other half with, uh, with GLaDOS. Um, but in hindsight now, it looked like the developers were onto a winner there and the audience, uh, the audience, the sort of followers of the franchise were the ones that pushed the developers into making an unideal decision. Still an amazing game though, but it's, I don't know, that to me is, is, is an example of how you can pander too much to an audience's content. This content isn't Portal 2. <laughs> So I'm not going to take it as seriously as that. I'm not going to. I'm really going. I'm. I'm going to sort of um, listen more than than assume is 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 really something that I'm going to try or something that I try and do. And um, and yeah, like engaging through social media. That's that's the use that I find out of it. Uh, I've worked in in tech and social media now for for a while professionally as well. And I got to tell you this: there are so many cowboys in social media. So many of them. Right, so many cowboys. Um, for those of you that don't know, a cowboy is someone that's, uh, you know, a snake oil merchant, someone who's selling themselves as being good at their job when they're really not, or selling their their wares as something that they're not. Uh, and that's the same thing. That's that's the thing with social media. I don't want to go into it on too much of a tangent. Facebook is the worst culprit because they curate their all of their content, and they curate it to a way that um, that only really they know and that they control and they manipulate. Um, Putting any kind of um, social media strategy behind Facebook is going to be is, is one that I would advise against for for any small business because you just F Facebook use that as a way of leaking um, a lot of businesses for money and a lot of the time it's small businesses that are ushered into it by social media consultants um, and I think social media consultants a lot of social media consultants think that they're really good at their job because they get lots of people onto social media but I have seen it um, return very little financial. Um, return on, on actual businesses because people don't want to follow their DIY store on Twitter and stuff like that but um, they'll pay someone £200 a day to tell them otherwise and and, and that's 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 the story of... Uh, I'm not saying that all social media um, consultants are like that but I'm... I, I, I've attended a fair number of social media things and, and it's... It's not, it's not, I wouldn't, you know, I, I would, I would really think for yourself rather than hire someone to do your thinking for you in terms of social media, because it's just, there's so many mistakes made and there are so many people that just, that don't sort of, um, 
you know, they've read a few books and think that they kind of grasp it, but um, uh, but then a couple of years down the line, YouTube, Google changes their algorithm and their entire knowledge is is, is fallen to shot. Um, which is actually quite interesting, and that's one of the reasons why open source is so great, is because uh, the social media industry is is it's really it's 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 an industry built not on industry knowledge, but on the knowledge of how to use other people's products, and that's that's something that which I know open source steers away from, and Linux steers away from. Thank God. Um, but yeah, social social media. I don't know, man. It's uh, but anyway, yeah, social media is a good way to actually engage with your content, and it's a good way to get feedback. Um, but as a way of just getting you pushing your content out there, uh, native platforms always do the best in my experience. So if you want to be big on Twitter, use Twitter. If you want to be big on on um, Periscope, use Periscope. I know it kind of sounds a little bit obvious, but a lot of people make their YouTube videos and then push them on other platforms really, really hard, doing little else other than um, annoying people, which is, you know, and that's the kind of thing you want to do. Avoid is is, is avoid annoying people, even if it's even if it's through advertising. In fact, that's one of the worst ways to do it. Uh, okay, so the next tip is. Title and describe your content as accurately as possible. As accurately as possible. Again, these aren't secrets, right? These, this is well-known knowledge, but these are things that I see people not doing when they should be doing them. And what I mean by this is the number of YouTubers that I know that make really good content, but they title their their videos "Way I'm just blah blah blah," you know, and and um or or just title it as 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 um vlogging and then the date or or um or something really vague something that no one would ever you know uh click on or even even a worse offender is misleading um titles if you're misleading someone through your title right either make the content that the title describes and get the views legitimately which is in a lot of cases not that hard or um title the video accurately right because um there are people on the internet that will watch just about anything if you can find the audience. There is an audience for just about anything I've come to learn, right? The issue in a lot of cases is sometimes finding that audience or you're discovering that audience or even just knowing that that audience has a viewer base. But it, uh, in, 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 in the vast majority of cases, if you're making content, there is an audience for it. So there's there's no point to, to only talk about this subject because that's the subject getting views. You can get views on just about any subject. This is a channel about open source and Linux that has 11,000 subscribers and there are much bigger channels than this on, on on, on um, you know, Nixie Pixel's got over a uh, hundred thousand. Um, the Linux Action Show, no, Jupiter Broadcasting, they've got like forty thousand. So there's a lot, you know, there's there's a good number of people out there that that have much bigger channels than I do, and um, um, and and so there is an audience for it. There is definitely an audience for something as niche as open source. There's an audience for 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 just about everything. Um, so the trick then is, is what you don't want to do is 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 describe your content badly because I've seen a lot of good content out there that's never going to get discovered because it doesn't have a, a fulled out description, it doesn't have a fulled out title. Title's the most important thing, right? You need to, you know, if you can describe exactly what your title would be. So a, a title um, for this video would be uh, rambling about um, uh, rambling about my views on YouTube, for example, or rambling about um, my attitude to making content on YouTube. Or something like that. I would the things that I would I would um, that I would focus on describing is the fact that it's a rambly vlog, the fact that I'm conversing with you, that I'm that it's not a casual thing, that this isn't going to be a five point presentation over and done within two minutes, right? They put the time on the videos, which is really useful, but you need to have people expect that this is going to be a rambly vlog that's going to talk uh, at length about a lot of issues. If you're not interested in, you know, you don't want to watch the video. So you want the title to be basically a description. Right. If this video was um, tips on how to get big on YouTube, which is in theory not a misleading title, right? People are still gonna people who approach this video, people that are gonna look at this video, are still gonna perhaps this isn't gonna capture the how to market because it's too long. It's gonna be too long a video. That that sort of market, that kind of audience, are looking for list videos, punchy videos. Um, and uh, to be honest, I could if I put my videos in list form more often, I probably would have a significant number of viewers because list videos is just a really good way of presenting them. But I like I say, to me there is a there is like an organic sense to this channel. There is a sort of a uh, a more informal aspect to it. So I kind of like that that vibe that I've got there. I don't want to turn into the Linux version of BuzzFeed, and I know you guys don't want me to do that either. So, so um, so there is. But um, uh, but it's 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 knowing it's describing your content as 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 accurately as possible. I've gone back on a number of videos that I've put out over the years and readjusted my title so that it's a little more descriptive. Descriptive. If anyone ever complains in the comment section that the title is misleading, I will always, uh, I will always um, at least somewhat 
um, look at it. And in the vast majority of cases, I will actually change the title if someone. Most of the times when people have had a problem with a misleading title that I've put up there, I've sort of changed it on their uh, on their complaint. And and it's been legit. You know, it's not like that. You know, it's not people kicking up a fuss. And um, and I found that to be really useful because it uh, touches on keywords. But also, you got to bear in mind is that in search results. Um, people are only going to read like the first four words of your title. So not only do you want you want the most important stuff at the beginning of your title, that's effectively it. My titles are quite long because I want them to be as descriptive as possible, but the first few words are the ones that I want to be the hook, and then the rest of the words fill out fill, you know, fill out the uh, the description of the video. It's it's all right to have a long title because if the title's too long, it will get cut off by YouTube. It's just to make sure that the important information is at the beginning of the title. Um, and the rest of it, and and, it, and also the title is where the most where the search engine puts a lot of stock into the keywords. So um, so that's also worth bearing in mind. Um, so when like an example of that would be, it's maybe better to talk about Ubuntu Linux than Ubuntu because Ubuntu Linux is just that little bit more of a descriptive term. Yes, it's longer, but it's more descriptive, and I tend to prefer more descriptive. Oh, um, over over brevity um as you guys bloody well know so there you go that's just my channel and that's just my like and i and that's just sort of how it's panned out on this channel again all channels are different some channels are designed to be short and punchy this one obviously isn't okay so the next piece of useful knowledge that i have picked up is to make your channel about something this channel this very channel that you're watching this video from used to be just a vlogging channel this used to just be my channel where i put up random content and see what happens and after a, a fashion uh, one particular linux video got a lot of views and um i decided to make more linux videos and more tech videos and more open source videos and uh, they kept getting more and more views and i I then realized that there was a, a real um, audience for the kind of content that I was producing. So this channel effectively became the content where I talked about tech and then all my other videos eventually migrated to to another channel or other channels. Um, and my channel has been going from strength to strength ever ever since I did that. That was probably the decision that, that improved this channel the most is to, to actually decide to go from like a channel just about the stuff that I get up to to a specific subject. So if you wanted to start, if you wanted to build a, a particularly successful YouTube channel, it's find a subject or find a selection of subjects that have something in common and then um, build on it. If I wanted to do a channel about something else, I would start a new channel and then build up that audience because that would be, you know, the people that are interested in, in, in whatever new content that I'd, I'd make are unlikely to be interested in in the content on this channel or the content on my other channels. So it's always good to compartmentalize these things. And that's why I have so many YouTube channels is that you guys, you know, might be interested in watching any content that I push out into the world. But um, the vast majority of people only want to talk or want me to talk about this issue or that issue and um and they kind of get a bit annoyed when i talk about anything other than what i'm supposed to talk about but considering that i talk a lot about tech and i talk a lot about politics and i talk quite a lot about flags as well i mean fun with flags is is is, is really kind of taken off as a channel as well um despite the little work that i've, I've been putting into it recently but i gotta get back on that um yeah, specializing spe specialization of channels is really something that can that can help him help them. And content is king nowadays, and um, people like to subscribe. I guess more to subjects than to people, but that isn't necessarily cl um, always the case. And sometimes, uh, you know, the the person and the subject will go hand in hand. So maybe in the two thousands you could trade solely on your personality, but like nowadays you kind of have to bring in. Um, you know, you have to kind of be a little bit more professional. You have to be a little bit more structured because, um, well, maybe, maybe the the standards have just been, you know, have raised. Who knows? Uh, the next one is thumbnails. Thumbnails, thumbnails, thumbnails. All videos should have thumbnails. It's an easy one, but the difference between videos that get thumb that get view in the vid did the. Let me start that again. The difference in views between videos that have thumbnails and videos that don't have thumbnails, irregardless, or irregardless, regardless of content and regardless of any other factors, thumbnail videos. Um, get more views. Okay, so my next piece of useful knowledge is that the quality of your audience is significantly more important than the size of your audience. This is something that took me a while to learn, but it's something that I I really value as a piece of knowledge because, and I'm really glad that I that I know this now, because having a small audience that engages with your content on the same level that you do that uh, and in the case of this channel you know a, a lot of you guys sort of use the content you know use the the the, uh, the software that we talk about some of you might even develop some of the software that we talk about and um and i i think that's a brilliant 
way to use social media to bring to 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 engage with the community and to 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 enjoy the you know the the, the fruits that open source offer and um and th- and and that to me will infinitely trump um any large um audience that just follow the latest craze or that will buy the next shiny thing that you dangle in front of them and those channels may be attractive to um uh to sponsors and sponsorship deals and 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 you know lucrative contracts and all that kind of stuff but i think having a small conscious and engaged um audience will always be something that i prefer and if you can have a large intellectually engaged audience that's even better but to be honest i'd rather make content for the for those of you that are interested and enthusiastic about it like me um than to do it for for any kind of adoration or anything like that you guys pretty much know that by now but it's something that i i i I feel that i'd like to put out there i guess so the final point which i think is arguably the most important and again not a particularly see you know it's not like a trade secret or anything is be polite uh, not enough people do this on the internet and it's too easy to build an audience by shouting at people through a camera it really is there are people on the internet that i disagree with there are people on the internet i don't specifically like but i don't it's i think the part of it is like the shouting and the disrespect that really bothers me because you can disagree with anyone about anything fine you're in the this there's this billion there's billions of people on the internet you're going to disagree with some of them and you're going to agree with some of them some of them are going to be assholes but you don't need to have a temper tantrum over it and there are there is a lot of youtubers there's a lot of people on all forms of social media um that that get an audience that get a subscriber base and they they get them all angry and 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 they get them all um uh you know they they get them all riled up and and offended and um and and, and angry at some kind of injustice in in whatever niche of 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 interests that they seem to have and it just seems to be all too easy to to get people into a fit of rage these days that i think those that can just need to step back and just treat people as as human beings because um because regardless of who the other person is you're not going to to endear them to any part of your you know intellect or reasoning by being um angry at them what you're really doing is just galvanating outrage on your side to to use effectively um at your whim which is what a lot of social media people do and it's to me a great abuse of power and it's something that i don't want any part of and i think that the best way to bring about a uh, a culture that we want to see is just just be nice to each other for fuck's sake <laughs> you know um and it helps and it really does help because um you can then start having constructive conversations and then you can start like learning right um but i think a lot i think sometimes you know there's uh there's there's a there's a, there's a lot of uh, ego in it i guess um so maybe that secret secret tip to finish off with just don't don't let your ego get in the way of something that you love because to be honest I've made a conscious effort to be as 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 polite as I can um and and and, and to try and sort of give people the benefit of the doubt and it it doesn't you know it it's it hasn't come back to bite me yet that's all I can say and that I've actually found that um that that uh, that, that it's all right you know it's just 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 treat people with respect is all. But I, to be honest, guys, I'm preaching to the converted. You guys see the same problems that I do, and you guys probably um, approve of the same kind of remedies. But I think you know, it's just you know, it's just it's just the world, isn't it? So anyway, guys, thank you for listening to me. Listen to me ramble on. Um, I've actually got to go back and edit this video now because I've gone off on a few tangents which uh, which aren't going to make the final cut. But um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you do want to see me, check out. Um, some other stuff like i do a lot of um a lot of videos like a lot of distro reviews don't make it to the channel uh which is one of the big differences that this channel's had over the years like um back in the day a couple of years ago any video that i'd make would make the channel because i put that much work in it but then surprising the number of videos that i actually make and then decide to scrap at the at the last uh last moment um because they're just either either not good enough or i feel that i'm being um too too harsh on a distro or um or or something's changed uh in in the, you know some like like I've made the video and then I've read the eula for for a, or 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 I've um 
or or, or like there's been a, a problem with it or something like that. Um, so the number of videos that, that, that get scrapped is, is, is quite high, and it's simply just to keep bad information away from you, effectively. But I do talk about the processes and the um, and, and and a lot of the distros that I don't make into videos um, on Twitter. So if you want to follow me, it's at Tech with Chris. Um, link, of course, in the description, which I think I might have mentioned earlier. But it's it's a good way if you want to sort of keep more up to date with with some of the stuff that I'm testing out, and if you want to sort of input into the channel there because if i decide to shelve something and you guys uh, and it's a bad decision um then you guys can convince me otherwise i guess on twitter or something uh, don't you know like it's um only only sort of follow me if you want to kind of you know engage like that i'm not sort of seeking as many twitter followers as possible um because it's only twitter isn't it another thing that people take far too seriously but um that's about it for me today i think um Thank you very much for, for watching. Leave your thoughts down in the comments section below. Um, I have uh, heeded a lot of requests for, for a podcast, so I'm looking into that into the future. Um, I'm just working out as to um, people that I might do it with and scheduling and software that I might use and stuff like that. So if you guys have any idea of what you'd like to see out of a podcast, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well down in the description below. So that's about it for me today after this long and rambly video. Um, until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.